Grid Framework is a plugin for Unity 3D. It's a framework for grid-based game logic. The leading design principle is that it fits into your code instead of forcing you to write your code according to some foreign plugin. The best way to explain what exactly Grid Framework does and how it can help you is by taking a quick tour through solving a real-world problem. Here's what I've prepared. We have a plane which has a movement script and a collider and when I play I can click on this plane and then the hero will follow these waypoints. So let's click, 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 click and follow waypoints. Now this is just a regular movement script written in Unity. It's my script. I like it. I want a game to work this way. So I don't want to change my script too much. I don't want to adjust my workflow to another plugin or anything. I want to integrate grid restrictions to this script. And here's how we're going to do it. First, we need to add a grid to the, ski, to the scene. We could add a grid component to, to an existing game object, but for this one, I'm going to create a whole new grid. So we go to game object, 3D object, grid, and we pick go kind, rectangular. So here's our grid, it's in 3D, and we have two components. The first one is the grid itself. It has some basic properties like spacing and shearing, but we're going to leave this to the defaults for this example. And we're going to move it to position, so the origin of the grid aligns with the lower left corner. So, what was it? Minus 5, minus 5, yeah, too much, and 0. Now, grids in grid framework are not just some array or list or anything like that. They are grids in a true mathematical, mathematical sense. So what this means is, all grids are infinitely large. And what you're seeing for, uh, of the grid is some sort of finite subset. And this subset is defined by a renderer. So in our case, we have a parallel epiped renderer, but you can also write your own renderers. And we, ad we will adjust the range. So we're going from 0 to 0 in the z-axis, so we get a nice flat two-dimensional grid. And we're going to increase the size from 10, 5 to 10. Now our grid aligns with our plane, and we can now start integrating it. Let's switch to our code. And the first thing we need to use, we need to do, is import grid framework. So let's say using grid framework, and our grids are under grids. Now we can add a reference to the grid. Public. And the class we're going to use is RecGrid. Save. And now let's switch back to our editor and select the plane. And now we can, add, we can add a reference to our grid. And now the connection is made, and all that's left is actually writing the code. Switch back to the code. And since I have written this code myself, I know the point of interest is right here. So what happens here is we take the raw input from the raycast and we just use it as it is. And what I want to do is instead get the nearest tile of my grid. There are many ways we could do this. We could for example take this point, convert it to grid coordinates and then round the coordinates. But since this is such a common task, there's already an extension for grid framework built in. So Let's import this extension using grid framework dot extensions and we're going to use nearest because we want the nearest cell. So let's change this. We use our grid reference dot nearest cell and as our point we use the raw point and as our coordinate system we use rect grid dot coordinate system Every grid has its own coordinate systems, and for rectangular grids we have world coordinates and grid coordinates. And we want world coordinates. So let's save the file. And let's try it out. Hit play. And let's see what happens if I click here. The hero goes straight to the center of the tile. So I can try, let's try this one. Again, center of the tile. Click. Click, 
Klick. Works. Works perfectly. Right now we got our restrictions working, but it's pretty silly that we can move from one tile to another in a straight line like this. For a real game, what I would like instead is to limit waypoints only to, uh, to be adjacent to, pre to the previous waypoint. So if I want to move up here, I would have to go click, 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 click. And any other click should simply be ignored. So here's how we're going to make it work. Switch back to our code. And here's how we're going to do it. When I write my filtering logic, I want it to be expressed only using grid coordinates. I don't want to concern myself with the state of the world. So the first thing we need to do is, every time a point, a waypoint gets added, we want it to be in grid coordinates. And every time this waypoint is being used to actually move the character in the world, we want it to be in world coordinates. So there are two points of interest. The first one is here, where the, act where the actor's position is added. And the other one is here, where we get our cell, our nearest cell. So what we're going to do here is we're going to wrap this part in a method call. So we use our grid again, and now we use the method world to grid. This method will convert this position from world coordinates to grid coordinates. Now for our near cell method, it's actually much easier. We just change our coordinate system from world to grid. Now when it comes to moving the character, we need to convert back to world coordinates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this variable to waypoint and now I'm going to create a new variable target which will be the old target variable and it's simply the world coordinates so grid to world of our waypoint. Save it. Uh, what's wrong? Lowercase w. And let's try it out. Hit play. And it should work just as it worked before. Okay, so we didn't break anything and we make we made our preparation for the next step. In order to realize this sort of filtering, we're going to compare grid coordinates. We're going to compare the coordinates of the last waypoint with the coordinates of the clicked tile. If the difference in coordinates is 1 or less, we are going to add a new waypoint, and if the difference is greater than 1, we are going to ignore the click. So if you take a look for in, at this tile, for example, the difference in x-coordinates is 1, and the difference in y-coordinates is 1 as well, so this tile is OK. Now if you take a look at the next tile, the difference in y-coordinates is 1, but the difference in x-coordinates is 2, so we are simply going to ignore this click. Let's head back to the code one last time. And our point of interest this time is where the waypoint is added. So first of all, we need the last tile. And there's an easy way to get it in .NET using the system.link namespace. And we're only going to need one method for it, which is the last method. So our waypoints and the last item. Now we can write our actual if block and we're going to use the difference in x coordinate and from the last point x coordinate as well. And the difference has to be less than 1 and I'm going to add a little bit for rounding errors. And literally the same thing. for the y coordinate as well. And only if our condition is met do we actually add the waypoint. So save the script, hit play, and let's see what we've done. So if I click here, here, and here, the character should move. Okay, now I'm going to click here, now I'm going to click down here, and then I'm going to click here. And only the first and the third click.
pick should count. And it works just as we would have expected. So I can click, 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 widely around, and only those movements within range of the last tile will actually be counted. In a few minutes, we have gone from completely unbounded general movement to tile-based movement, which filters out its input by grid coordinates. What is remarkable is that we were able to do all of this regardless of how exactly movement had been implemented. I was using C-sharp coroutines, but I could have just as well used Unity's character controller or iDween, for example. As the programmer of your game, you know best how it is supposed to work, and grid framework helps to get there by abstracting away the math behind grids. Aside from rectangular grids, there are also hexagonal, polar and spherical grids. Each of these grids has its own coordinate systems and is infinitely large. In order to display a grid during gameplay, every grid has a renderer class or in the case of hex grids, multiple renderers. And if that isn't enough for you, you can write your own grid classes, renderers or extension methods. You can take the points computed by the renderer and use them with another Unity plugin, like the official Vectorosity support does. Grid Framework can be used both at runtime to script your game, as well as in the editor to write extensions, like the Grid Align panel. If you want to know more about Grid Framework, please visit the official product site or drop me a line. Thank you for watching and happy scripting!